Adam Kenny is an engineer and he is a contractor, so he's the best of both worlds. And he's also someone that listeners can go on to Odd Engineer and book time with immediately right now and get his one-on-one -on -one personal advice. So thank you for being here, Adam. Thank you. Letting me peg you with questions. That's all right. So I used to work in automotive uh, illumination design and yep. I was surrounded by CAD modelers. And when they would talk about your haloed position, it was mm -hmm. like, oh, but but if you could do class A surface, oh, that's, oh, that's, oh, that's hard. You know, like they would talk about it with hushed breath. And the people who actually got to play with the clay <laughs> and be there at the, the first, you know, actually doing the fascia stuff instead of, you know, what we would do, yeah. which is just like moving around PCB so they're in the perfectly correct position and that type of stuff. So uh, I know a lot of people would love to know, how do you get from CAD monkey to up into this well, other level? Where we're you still CAD monkey. <laughs> but, always, but it's art. I think you're an artist. You, you're, you're, you have one foot in, in CAD design and one foot in, in artistic yeah. rendering, I think. Yeah, I think so. You're kind of, uh, you're the bridge, I guess, between, I mean, you're the conduit most of the time mm. for class. I mean, class A is a funny term you hear. A lot of people say class A surfacing, class A this. Yeah. You see, you type in class A on the internet. Because when I started off doing this job, I didn't know what it was. You know, there was <laughs> as far as I was aware, you know, I was learning to use a bit of software to model things in 3D. Class A is kind of a mindset, uh, it's a methodology, it's how you do things. Um, but you can apply that at any level. So you can be the guy who sat with concept designers and you can have a class A mindset. You might not be doing class A surfacing, mm -hmm. so tolerances, super tight tolerances, um, really, really controlled highlights, but you can have that mindset and, and allow that to carry through to essentially what the class A team will do, which is genuinely, genuinely at the, the end of the process. So you would start off with a sketch, you have guys making, you know, working on the design theme, coming up with ideas, and then you have concept modelers trying to get to find the volume and make that into 3D. You work with clay designers who will be making clay models from that. And then eventually as the as the design matures and they settle on a theme and and, and it, makes its way down the process, you get to the class A service, which is kind of integrating engineering. And then your job is to really get into detail, to really look at the highlights of the surfaces, to make sure that where surfaces meet, you've got the right, they're positional, but within thousandth of a millimeter, so wow. five thousandths of a millimeter, Sometimes when you've got surfaces and then you've got angles of tangent, you've got to be within you know, 0 0.075 degrees when the when the surfaces meet together. So the angles have got to be set. And these are all things that you have to manage and build in the packaging, the engineering criteria. So on, a, on an exterior class A surface or on the, the car exterior, if you like, you have analysis tools that show you the highlights. And they will highlight straight away where the light will run across the oh, surface, neat. given an angle. So you have to look at that and you want to see how the highlight will run over the wheel arch along the body side. And as that transitions up and over the shoulder line of the vehicle, you want to make sure that that highlight's controlled. And it may be that you've got one little control point that needs to move up a tenth of a millimeter. Wow. And that can, can, and you might spend a week chasing these. Is that how you, you know, do it? Flat, flat spots around the car. But these are things that people don't, at that level, people won't see them. So if you go into a showroom, you look at this kind of thing, wow, this supercar is amazing. You know, it looks absolutely stunning, but you don't actually appreciate what's gone into that. So my brother kept intermittently saying to me, come on, we're going to be asked, do I know any models? And you want to be a model. And you're doing something else and you maybe don't want to So I, I I made some contact, I emailed some people, I spoke to some agencies, and this is probably what I would advise anybody who's looking for a way in. It's maybe not traditional, you know, college university, not, not a straight line entry, 
and they want some way in. And I would say, look, you know, you speak to, find out what agencies work within the industry. Introduce yourself, explain what you want to do. Then try and make, I was lucky because I got a, you know, I, my brother was in a good position. He was starting in the industry. He had some contacts already, he had some names, but I just kept on, not pestering, but <laughs> in a nice way. So I send emails out to these people who I didn't really know. I just said, you know, it's, it's Kenny's brother. You know, I want to do this. I'm really interested in that. This is what I've been doing. And, um, Eventually, I got a phone call um, from a guy called Steve Hobart, I think it was initially. And he was there with a company that were, had just potentially landed huge contracts with Lotus cars, sports cars. So I was like, okay. And he said, do you, want, do you want to learn? He said, I've seen your, I've done, I've made myself a skateboard at one point. When I, stuff and I made all these performers and prep made a press and got all these laminates and this glue from America and I'd made this longboard type thing and he said oh I've seen your blog I've seen you know I've seen what you've made on there I mean I really like the fact that you like you know you understand 3D form forget about you've been working in finance that's not interesting so I can clearly see you like 3D model. you've got an eye for 3D form you're really trying to get into the industry so do you want to learn Isomserve. And at that point I was like, yeah, what's Isomserve? I had no idea. Never heard of it. <laughs> so I Googled Isomserve and this software, I I thought this can't be right. And I rang him back and I said, I've Googled Isomserve. It looks like something from the 70s. It's got a smiley face in the corner. It's these endless colours. And he's like, yeah, that's Isomserve. That's the one. <laughs> That's, that's what we're doing. So I mentioned my first job was through a company called Envisage in Coventry and they were, as a satellite studio, doing some work for Lotus and this was a team, it was a team of us. But I'll give you an idea of what the project was. It was cancelled in the year, I think. So. But, you know, that's the industry. That happens a lot. You, know, you can go three years on a project and, and that it never sees the light of day. So this this was a concept design. Yeah, so that was the, I think this was the year before I started. This was at one of the car shows. And this was revealed as, I think Lotus at the time were gonna so cool. do five new programs, which is why they needed this team of people training up quite quickly and bringing it into the industry. This, For those of the people that can't see it, because it's, it's the podcast version, it's very, very sexy coupe. <laughs> <There's... laughs> <laughs> it's just, trust us, it's gorgeous. Yeah, it's, it's really cool. Yeah, but it, I mean, I, that may have made into production some I, I'm not sure. I, I forget what happened with that. But, um, wow, yeah. look at those, the handles oh, on the sorry. car. They're yeah. very futuristic. But obviously with the, with the concept sketches, a lot of the things get, not not always, but quite a lot of the time, get diluted down to something more feasible. So if someone came to you and they're they're building a new physical product, they make an appointment with you on Auto Engineer and they're like, yeah. we want this to look sharp. What kind of things can you tell me? Sometimes engineers will come and they, they're not bothered about what it looks like. They want to get this into there and close the model up and get it out the door. What's the cheapest way of doing it? But that might mean you've got a really horrible split line right where the customer sees it. It's going to feel horrible. It's going to look horrible. So you will then work with design or whoever controls that design of that product and say, actually, can we move this split line to here? Can we hide this in some way so the customer sees the amazing object you've designed, but have to see this cable inlet or doesn't have to see this you know, the switch underneath, that's not part of the cool design. That's just a functional switch. Can we hide it? If you would like one-on-one -on -one guidance from Adam Kenny, you can directly book an appointment with him on autoengineer.com. Otherwise, for more details and links, check out the full article on solidsmack.com.